Hello traders, my name is Ray, better known as Samurai Trader, and I love day trading. My job is to teach you how to day trade the world's best day trading strategies, no matter which market you trade, futures, forex, or stocks. Before we get underway, please make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking on the little red button below so that you keep up to date with my most recent videos. In today's session, we're gonna be focusing on forex trading, using Renko charts. We're also going to be looking at high probability trading setups with Renko charts and how to read price action from the right hand side of a screen. Now I do need to pull up the disclaimer. There is of course a risk in trading. As you are watching the recording, please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer and a very, very quick advertisement. Please click on the link below so you can download my free training manual. And I also have another manual there called The Truth About Day Trading. Even more importantly, uh, visit my website. And as you'll see, a very quick advertisement. Uh, for $197, you obtain my complete program, including all of my indicators and eight live coaching sessions. I run, I've got over 200 members that attend my live coaching sessions each month. If you can't attend the live session, they are recorded. That's 16 hours of live coaching. So that's a bonus for the month. So for $197, my entire program plus the coaching. End of ad, let's get into it. So really, this is about high probability trading. Now, when it comes to trading uh, any setup, let's consider, and we must always consider, the logic behind the strategy. So we're going to be looking at how we trade using higher time frames. And this is probably going to be one of the most important trading lessons you will ever have. How to trade in the direction of higher time frames. What we're actually looking for traders is a retracement or a pullback on a on what we call an entry chart, a lower time frame. We then want to be trading the trend continuation trades back in the direction of the overall trend. Now, I'm not going to get too much into it in this video. I want to try to keep this to about 30 minutes. But then what happens is after these extended moves, we then get these golden divergence trades set up. And I want to teach you how to trade these because uh, they're, they're just a, a great trade set up when you're using divergence on the higher time frames. However, as I caution all new traders and even experienced traders if you're not yet profitable, put divergence trading to the side. Bird in the hands better than two in the bush. Start trading or trend trading initially until you're consistently profitable, then move on. Now just one of the key considerations really that traders need to learn, know and master as soon as possible. Number one, what are the best strategies to start with? What indicators do I really need? What are the best charts to use? In today's session, we're going to be focused here on Renko. However, I will look at time-based charts at times and I'll look at tick charts regularly because they can uh, still form a very important part of your trading. Now, we're going to be looking at what I call the best EC, which stands for entry chart and anchor chart timeframes to use. And there's a whole lot more that a trader needs to learn. And we could spend many, many hours going through this. Now, one thing that you need to understand and really, yeah, you know, you know, I think it's the best way, really understand and, and sink in. You've got to treat mastering out of day trading as a 90 to 180 day internship. Unfortunately, and it's unfortunate a lot of traders won't even watch this entire 30 odd minute video. I'll get in, pick up, I'll look at a couple of things and I'll move on to the next thing. Traders, what I'm about to show you is ideas that I've gathered and strategies and trading techniques over 27 years. Let me save you a fortune in money and even more in time because I can really shut, really, really shortcut your trading journal. A journey, let me say that again. <laughs> journey. Um, and I should point out all of my videos traders are raw, real and unedited. Okay, so let's get to the charts. Let's really get down to this as soon as possible. So what I've got here, and we're just going to look at today at the Australian dollar USD. So I've got here the uh, a, a one tick Renko. 
a two tick and a four tick now one tick is very low it's really the, you, the, the lowest time frame you can go unless you start trading uh, using say Oh, yes, you can use a 30 second chart, of course, but if you can drop down, say, trading the currency futures where you can trade half a, a, a pip, let me get this right. And I should point out, um, uh, pips and ticks is two different things. If you're trading the currency futures, uh, usually on those contracts, we'll refer to them as ticks. Of course, when we're trading Forex, it's usually um, uh, pips, so <laughs> a slight difference there. Now, let me go through some things that are that are really important. Why trade with a higher time frame? When we're trading a lower time frame, what we call our entry chart, we're going to have regular pullbacks and retracements quite often uh, that'll be profit taking. And when we get those, we want to be trading back in the direction of the higher time frames. Now, learning how to read a chart from the right hand side is a little bit like I refer to it as a pilot learning how to fly an aircraft he's got to be able to read his instruments and in our case you've got to learn how to read your uh, indicators now here when we really look at the indicators I've got I've got a number of um, moving averages EMAs I've got my floor pivots I've got a two smooth stochastic and a MACD now, I use the two smooth stochastic for trend continuation trades. For any pure price action traders watching this, you can get away without both of these. You could just trade with the EMAs trading your pullbacks and trend continuations. I know that. However, indicators are nice additional uh, confirmation tools. So what we've got here is our higher time frames. So sometimes you'll have a one tick is too fast, particularly around a red flag news announcement. You're not going to be able to trade a one tick. Let's be, be realistic. Uh, well, I said it again, one pip. <laughs> However, 95% of the time you can. And what it means is when you're trading a one pip chart, typically if my entry was at this point and I'm putting my stop one pip under this low, I've only got a six pip stop. Now, if you're trading a standard lot, that of course is going to be on the Australian dollar, 60 US dollars. If you're trading a mini, you're only looking at $6. The higher the time frame you trade, the larger the stop you normally have. But we also need to be realistic on the time frame that you're trading. That is, trading a one pip for some traders is just too fast and just doesn't suit your personality so you need to really find what works for you so what I'm going to do traders the best thing for me to do is to expand the chart and I'm going to read the chart from the right hand side for you and we will go to the anchor charts because there are things there are patterns that appear and, and really trading is nothing more than a pattern solving exercise we see the same patterns appear in the market day in day out and what we want to do is learn how to identify these patterns now because we're not live uh, and I've gone back over a lot of data so I can quickly scoot through I've got my I'm going to close the anchor charts I don't want to have them open because it'll show me what's in advance and I want to truly be reading these charts to you and what I'm looking at okay so you can really get an idea of what you must be doing as you trade so what we'll do let's just start at this point now we can see here from this from the open here this is at um, uh, 3 30 in the afternoon and you can see here that we had a lot of chop look at this here this is just really dangerous a really dangerous area notice here that I've got four EMAs and notice how they're all inter intertwined and We'll see a lot of this quite often when we're close to the pivots. Now, let me give you secret number one. See this pivot here? That's called a midline pivot. Now, there are many different types of pivots. And a midline pivot is nothing more than the 50% level between your R1 and R2 or your floor pivot and your R1 or your floor pivot and your S1, your S2, etc. It's just the 50% level an incredibly important level as you're going to be learning now 
If you don't have a, a floor pivot indicator that plots the 50 cent point, all you do is take your Fibonacci tool and plot it from say your floor pivot up to the R1, resistance one and just drop a 50% line in. That's all you've got to do. It's quite simple. So the indicators I've got here, the little black dots here you can see are, are fractals. And we won't get into fractals in this session. The little brown dots here is nothing more than an indicator indicating a 50 CCI zero line crossover. And all that is, is something I discovered years ago is when the eight EMA crosses the 34. A 50 CCI EMA sorry, 50 CCI indicator, not EMA, 50 CCI indicator is widely used by traders all around the world for a trend uh, indicator, a trend directional indicator. So basically what it gives me and tells me is that's when I get the zero line crosses below, the bars on the CCI indicator cross below the zero line. And if it go up here, uh, up here, it tells me it's above. So you can see here on a 50 CCI, you'd be all over the place. Finally, we get a crossover. Now, what you can see here is what we call a fanning of the EMAs. That's what that is. See how we're starting to now get a fanning of the EMAs. And it starts to form what we call angulation. Angulation is where you start to see the EMAs angle away from price action, very important for high probability trade entries. So number one, I'm looking at angulation and the fanning. Secondly, I'm looking at divergence and for divergence trades. Now there's a whole range of divergence trades and I really need um, a lot more time to explain the different divergence. Now, uh, in my program with my members, I've got over 9,000 members and I mentioned now, I think I've got about 280 in my coaching classes each month. And a lot of those are full-time professionals. And we call this one here on the lowest time frame at C19. Got different codes, there's so many different types of setups you can have. We just call that a T19. Now, with that being said, I should point out, when you first start trading, what you want to do is focus on only one or two setups that are trend following. Once you master those, you own those, you add another to your arsenal and you expand from there. So let's just focus and, and, and I'll have to slap myself around every now and then and remind myself that we want to really stay focused on trend following. Now, let me just quickly talk to you about entries. Right here, we've got an entry and we call that a 34B. And there's two ways I can enter that. When you've got a Renko chart, this first reversal candle, if I took away my super scalper, which is the white paint bar, and I will say that white paint bar does not appear until I get a tick below the second, um, the second candle, okay? So it doesn't appear until down here. Now, if I was to turn that off, and it, what you would see there is a red candle. Now, what I do like to see is if I've got a nice trend, it's nice to see a short-term stochastic hook. And that's what that is, a stochastic hook just there. Now, that's been around for years, the concept. Many traders call it the slingshot trade. Or with Renko, what you can do is enter when you've got a nice, strong trending EMA, you can enter on the first reversal candle in this particular direction, and we call that a rule of one. It's exclusive to Renko chart trading, the rule of one. If you're trading uh, range charts, and I'll do one on range charts one day, uh, we call it the rule of two. You've got to wait for two lower or two higher closes. When you're trading Renko with trend, okay, that is when you've got your EMAs are trending, you can enter on your first candle and put your stop uh, one pip above. Okay, and what that does, it gives you a much smaller stop than say waiting for three lower closes. For an example, if I found I was in a consolidation zone, what I then wait for is my super scalper to plot and I'm effectively looking for three higher closes. So I've got an entry right here. Now I'm also right at the pivot and what that generally tells you when you're at the pivot, we get, tend to get a lot of bouncing around. And so there are, here are the things that we really want to know. Where is my entry? 
where do I put my stop and where is my target so my entry in this case is going to be on the close of the first brick I call them candles but technically they're Renko bricks my stop is going to go one pip above and my target is going to be what the market gives me now <laughs> let me explain that see this midline pivot just here now what I know is that distance there to there there's going to be a pivot a floor pivot down here somewhere so number one if we hit down here we're going to no doubt have what we call a pivot bounce so we need to be concerned about that now also if you're scalping the market uh, if you can pick up three or four um, pips you can do really well now what is really important here is what we call the, sp the spread to pip potential which pairs are worth day trading so I'm after a market with a good trading range where I get lots of swings that's very important to me and ideally where I can have um, a low spread like it'd be great if it was one pip to two pips okay that is much more suitable for scalping now here I've got an entry using the rule of one on this first candle now let's just say let's just be really conservative and say that we only had uh, that we and we end up getting slippage and let's just say we use the market order now I really like using limit orders and, and once again we could spend hours just talking about how we use our orders but let's just say he'd be conservative that we got in on the close now what this means is in total I'm going to have a three um, uh, pip spread why that one two and one above I would have a on a standard lot $30 spread now I want to go sorry 30 uh, uh, stop my apologies plus the commissions or the spread a broker is going to charge you so here this is the start of the fanning just here so let's just be realistic here and so okay we answer this and we really want to be going for at least five um, pips so one two three now my break even would be four and we can see here it reverses and guess what unfortunately I get stopped out so I'm now looking for my next trade now I want you to notice here the 89 is now crossed so I've got a 289 34 21 and 8 EMA now I get my next entry here on the close of the third now this is what I call the super scalper entry just here now a super scalper entry is where I have three in this case lower closes and this would be in the direction of a higher time frame so let me show you what I mean so this is very important to us and why we want to be referring to our anchor charts now what we've got just here is our anchor charts and we've got a time frame twice and then twice that again higher so what this tells me is looking at this here and let me just scoot along a little bit that see how my 34 is under the 89 I'm now rolling over here I've had a higher high it's now making lower low, lower highs down here this is my short look and, and let me say this this is not rocket science what I'm teaching you here okay and after 30 or 40 hours it really starts to sink in you know one of the greatest really just it, something that really disturbs me is so many traders what will only spend three or four hours really focused on the charts but I can give you everything but I can't give you screen time screen time is something you're, you've got to experience but it's what practice is what makes you great so we're going to short here now remember here uh, I'm in on the close my stops gonna be above the high so what I'm gonna have here is between and let's just be conservative uh, a four to six pip stop including the spread okay so that's really what I'm after as a target I really want to get that that six pips um, net so one 
two. I've got to get past here. Still at two. Three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. Now I'll talk about trailing here and see now I've come down and hit the pivot level. Now, almost always when we hit a pivot, um, we're going to have a bounce. And this is why it's so important, traders, that you understand where your pivots are because you're going to get a pivot bounce nearly every single time. Now, when you have a pivot bounce, one of the important things we want to look at then is do I have divergence? Because if you've got divergence off a pivot, that can be one of the most valuable uh, uh, entry points and high probability entry points. So here, uh, I don't have an entry, comes back down again, and by the way, I didn't have one there, and now I do have a potential entry. See here, I've got a little double bottom. Now let's just check out how long that took to form. Okay, that's 35, 40, 40, look at that there. Okay, you had 20 minutes there. Okay, now my entry is the close of the third. And I know I wasn't going to talk divergence trades, okay, but uh, now I just saw that one because it's going to lead me to my next trade, which is going to be a trend following trade. Look at this here. Can you see here, traders, that you've now getting a fanning of the EMA. So I'm just reading this as we go along, just like you're seeing here. So I'll take this, but I'll scalp whatever I can get. And what I mean by that, there are two, there are really three key bounce points. The 89, the midline pivot, or the 200. Let's just wait and see. 90% of the time when I'm getting this fanning, we'll get a bounce. So let's see what happens. So one, two, whoops, still one, two, three, four. Now there, it only touched four pips and we're getting that rejection off the 89. Now let's not scroll along here anymore, but I do want to point this out. And this is where the magic of your anchor charts and the EMAs come to play. Not only are your floor pivots a pivotal part of your trading, because floor pivots are actually one of the very few what we call leading indicators. They're a, a predictive indicator. Because you're working on op open high, low and close from the day before and so many traders trade them, they're very, very high percentage type trade or bounce point. In fact, we have a setup, we call it the pivot magnet trade. That is that you sell into a pivot with trend because you've got a very high probability of actually profiting and having a successful bounce. Now, the reason I bring up uh, our EMAs, see over here how I bounced on the 200? See over here. I've got my 89 on the anchor chart too. Now, this will be my next area of support. We may have an overshoot, we may bounce on it or slightly above it. They're a guide, it's not an exact science, but it's darn well close to it. Okay, so we will short this on the close of the third candle and we want to get past this pivot level, but here we're now starting to make new lower highs a new lower low. So that sort of increases the probability of us coming down and hitting our target. Now, the next thing we also want to do, traders, is uh, what are we after? That is, what's our target? Well, here really, because we've got, including the spread, probably about a six pip spread there, we want to go for at least um, our six to eight pips. Now, let me remind you here, we're day trading here, we're not swing trading. Now, just earning um, uh, two to four hundred dollars a day, uh, swing trading, sorry, um, uh, day trading and scalping, you can make a lot of money. For an example, let me just quickly show you this before I move on. Let's just say here that in your account, because we never ever, what we never ever risk any more than 2%. Now here, as you've seen, your average stop is going to be around six pips, which is $60 in this particular market. Let's just make it 10 pips. 
okay let's just say we we're day trading with a 10 pip stop which is 100 so that would mean to stay within a 2% rule we need to have at least $5,000 in our account let's put in there 6,000 you always want to have a buffer so what that means is I can have up to a $100 stop loss and I'm within my 2% rule and let's just leave this let's just make it $200 let's just say our daily target is $200 okay what this tells us is that we're starting by trading one contract once we double our money we have 12,000 we start trading two contracts once we get up to 18,000 we start trading three what that shows us here we have the potential to be of earning ten thousand dollars a week within 18 weeks that's right just by making or earning two hundred dollars um, a day now for those that are starting out as many traders do with a smaller account let's just say you're going to start trading micros and you've only got a thousand dollars in the account now let's just say here that with your micro you're only earning fifty dollars a day okay that's 50 uh, um, mini pips I should say not micros minis a day that's 50 a day starting off with that you can see there that with that $1,000 and 50 a day I've got a potential of being up there within 18 weeks also the potential in this is massive so let's just say we only say if you want to really take it easy only 30 um, uh, mini pips a day you're there within here it's taken you 33 weeks to get there but only starting off with a thousand dollars in your account and just thirty dollars a day a one to two risk reward and all that sort of thing um, uh, you know don't take the trade but and then traders wonder why they miss out on so many great trades where they could have got a lower return but very very high probability do you know what have you worked out what the stats are if you've got a 90 percent winning strategy but you're only getting a one to two you're still kicking butt big time now with something like this you know we're going to get a bounce 90 percent of the time here look at even this one here and it's not actually a 2d but we get these bounces and if we break the 89 we bounce off the 200 we see these every single day now here we might have only picked up three or four pips out of that but also this is why it's important the spreads are important now if you're trading futures or even the currency futures you've only got a five dollar round turn commission cost so once you get up to having around fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars it's really well worth having a look at the currency futures because some um, uh, uh, I love and the, the AD the Australian dollar is my um, futures contract of choice because you got great volume and a maximum of around five dollars in commission round turn it's fantastic but anyway there's a lot of other people like that love their, their spot Forex and the other thing with the spot Forex is of course you can start with a much smaller account and build all right so now we've got a bit of a bounce let's now I'm just looking for another two oops sorry just there I've got a bad bag I just had a spasm then <laughs> sorry uh, now here we've now got a little double top with trend once again I'm going to go short now what I want to point out and as we close I want to show you something here okay so we go over here All right now these just see we actually had two potential entries one there where we would have been stopped on that one note we're right on the pivot and this is why you've got to know where your pivots are so that one bounced and then you had a second your entry would have been here your second entry is here and away we go down 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 from there and here is by the way if you did get out there you've now got another entry just there that's what we call a 34b or a slingshot and away we go now as we come down okay we're coming down we're coming down now we get another bounce now we remember I said to you we're always reading our instruments and what I mean by that traders is, is this as price action comes down here and let me just get this right so we've got that this is what we would have been looking at just here 
okay, come down. Here is what we call our bounce. When we bounce on these higher time frame EMAs, we call that a T12. Look, they're easy codes and we've got abbreviation sheets here and they're not rocket science. All it means is we've got to bounce off a higher time frame EMA. What we look at, I've got a bounce, okay, that's good, but do I have divergence? Now I've got no divergence here on my lower time frame, but I have divergence on the anchor chart one. Can you remember where we target when we get those? The cyan, and up we go again, okay? Very, very powerful entry. Now, let's just, let's just look at this again. Now here, we're not scrolling along. What are we hitting? Remember earlier, I said the magic EMAs are what? The 34, the 89, 200. What are we hitting? There are two key resistance areas here. We've got the pivot level just there, the, the hash you can see there, but I've also got the 200 EMA. Now, let's just see what happens because I'd be telling you right now, get ready to exit and reverse and bang, three lower closes, there's my entry. Now, what I want you to do is notice what happens over here. Let's just see. Look at this. Bang. What did I tell you about the magic numbers on the EMAs? Notice where we bounced. 89, 200, 89, 200, 89. Okay, so we bounced off those areas. So now, what do we do? We're going to short because we've got a bounce here, a bounce here. Let's go short again. Now, some of these waves, and these are what we call legs down, may be um, very, very small. And if you want the larger moves, all you do is increase the time frame. So look, we've already spent, uh, gee whiz, that's 36 minutes is basically, or 34 minutes has already flown past. So there's so much more to this. So um, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Better still, get on my mailing list. Go and visit my uh, website, download my ebook, or even better, become a member and you'll get to learn all of this. But seriously, traders, the, the income potential in trading is massive. Be willing to invest the time. You've got the greatest opportunity available to you before you. And, you know, and basically, this ain't rocket science. It's just a matter of learning some of the key points of trading. So thank you traders, subscribe and you'll see me on the next video. Thank you.